This is the first actual video of this Git internal series, where we'll cover the main Git objects, blob, tree, and commit. Let us start by forgetting about code repositories, just for a few minutes. Instead, let us think about Git as a system for maintaining a file system, and specifically, snapshots of that file system in time. A file system begins with a root directory, which usually contains other directories. These directories contain other directories and or files. In Git, the contents of files are stored in objects called blobs, binary large objects. The difference between blobs and files is that files also contain metadata. For example, a file remembers when it was created, so if you move that file into another directory, its creation time remains the same. Blobs, on the other hand, are just contents, binary streams of data. A blob doesn't register its creation date, its name, or basically anything but its contents. Every blob in Git is identified by its SHA-1 hash. SHA-1 hashes consist of 20 bytes, usually represented by 40 characters in hexadecimal form. Throughout these videos, we'll sometimes show just the first characters of that hash, in short. In Git, the equivalent of a directory is a tree. A tree is basically a directory listing, referring to blobs as well as other trees. Trees are identified by their SHA-1 hashes as well. Referring to these objects, either blobs or other trees, happens via the SHA-1 hash of the objects. Note that the tree CAFE7 refers to the blob F92AO as peak.png. In another tree, that same blob may have another name. Let us add another file and another tree. What does this diagram actually reflect? Can you imagine it as a file system? This diagram is equivalent to a file system with a root directory that has one file at slash tets.js and a directory named slash docs with two files, peak.png and one.txt. Now it's time to take a snapshot of that file system and store all the files that existed at that time along with their contents. In Git, a snapshot is a commit. A commit object includes a pointer to the main tree, which is the root directory. The commit also stores metadata, such as the committer, a commit message, and the commit time. In most cases, a commit also has one or more parent commits, the previous snapshot or snapshots. Of course, commit objects are also identified by their SHA-1 hashes. These are the hashes we are used to seeing when we use git log. Note that every commit holds the entire snapshot, not just diffs from the previous committer commits. How can that work? Well, doesn't that mean that we have to store a lot of data on every single commit? Well, let's examine what happens if we change the contents of a file. Say that we edit 1.txt and add the word world to it. That is, we change the content from hello to hello world. Well, this change would mean that we have a new blob with a new SHA-1 hash. This makes sense, as the SHA-1 of hello is different from the SHA-1 value of hello world. Since we have a new hash, then the trees listing should also change. After all, our tree no longer points to blob 73D8A, but rather blob 62E7A instead. As we change the tree's contents, we also change its hash. And now, since the hash of that tree is different, we also need to change the parent tree, as the latter no longer points to tree cafe 7 but rather tree 24601. Consequently, the parent tree will also have a new hash. We're almost ready to create a new commit object, and it seems like we're going to store a lot of data, the entire file system, once more. But is that really necessary? Actually, some objects, specifically blob objects, haven't changed since the previous commit. Look at blob F92A0, it remained intact, and so did blob FOOD1. So this is the trick, 
as long as an object doesn't change, we don't store it again. In this case, we don't need to store blob f92a0 and blob f00d1 once more. We only refer to them by their hash values. We can then create our commit object. Since this commit is not the first commit, it has a parent, commit a1337, we committed earlier. So to recap, we introduced three git objects, a blob, which consists of the contents of a file, a tree, a directory listing of blobs and trees, and a commit, which is a snapshot of the working tree. Let us consider the hashes of these objects for a bit. Let's say I wrote the string git is awesome and created a blob from it. You did the same on your system. Would we have the same hash? The answer is yes. Since the blobs consist of the same data, they'll have the same SHA-1 values. What if I made a tree that references the blob of git is awesome and I gave it a specific name and metadata and you did exactly the same on your system? Would we have the same hash? Again, yes, since the tree's objects are the same, they will always have the same hash. What if I created a commit of that tree with the commit message hello and you did the same on your system? Would we have the same hash? In this case, the answer is no. Even though our commit objects refer to the same tree, they have different commit details, different times, different committer, etc. In this video, we cover the basic objects of Git. On the next video, we'll talk about branches and understand how they relate to the terms we covered in this video. After that, we'll understand how changes are tracked within Git. If you haven't already, please subscribe to this channel so you keep with us when we publish more videos. See you soon!